Hey everybody, it's Mark Taylor Canfield for the MTC Report here in Seattle. Welcome to my channel. Uh, please make sure you hit the, the click that little button down there that says you like it. And um, if you subscribe, make sure you hit the bell so that you can get notices of my new videos. By the way, I have a new song coming out soon on uh, Spotify and Amazon Music and Apple Music and all the rest. So look forward to that. Um, it's coming out with, within a few days, I think. Um, according to the distributor. So, I have a new single, it's a rock song. Some people call it punk blues. So, I don't know. Uh, a lot of my music sort of defies categorization, but this one is definitely a rock song. Um, so, I'll keep you informed about that. Uh, I know what a lot of you are thinking. This is a very strange time we're living in, right? When uh, you have a Supreme Court that has granted uh, criminal immunity to all future presidents of the United States for any acts done under a quote official capacity so that's kind of scary I mean that is more than I think the unitary president that you know the Federalist paper number 70 was calling for this is more like uh, authoritarianism and speaking of that the right-wing authoritarian candidate for US president uh, was wounded and two people in his audience were killed during an assassination attempt. So these are crazy times, folks. Um, the other candidate uh, the, of the major two parties, or what Dr. Cornell's, Cornell West calls the duopoly, um, the other candidate, President Joe Biden, is now rumored to be getting ready to withdraw from the race. So I guess uh, welcome Kamala uh, Kamala Harris. Welcome Kam Kamala Harris as our next president. Anyway, things are up in the air. It's a very strange season. Uh, it is silly season, as they say, because of politics. The Republican National Convention is going on with its usual appeals to uh, Christianity and uh, patriotism, and militarism. Um, but it's a strange time, I, I admit. Um, and as a journalist, it keeps me on my toes as a, as a musician, singer, songwriter, trying to cover things topical, it definitely keeps me on my toes. So that's what's been going on. Um, I've been super busy doing lots of things, too many to talk about probably in this video, but one of the things I just did was actually interview Dr. Cornell West, who I've known for years, um, and he had invited me on his show with Tavis Smiley at one point. Um, we discussed uh, the re-election campaign of Barack Obama and his legacy. So, uh, Dr. West is someone that I admire. He's got a, a very uh, compassionate heart, warm, very warm man, warm-hearted guy. Uh, really does want to do the best for the people. And he has chosen Malina Abdullah as Professor Marie, Malina Abdullah as his running mate. So two professors, that's two of them, two doctors, two PhDs running for president. So there you go. Philosopher, president, why not? Um, the reality is, of course, that he and uh, Molina are up against huge odds because of the control of the uh, media in the United States, almost all of it, at least the audience, uh, the market shares, but are controlled by a few multi- mega media corporations who obviously represent both uh, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. So you're not going to get any other views in uh, most of the U.S. media. And one of the things that I briefed Dr. West and his campaign about, same thing that I briefed uh, Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal about, is this uh, fact that the United States is currently ranked, get it here folks, 55th in the world in terms of press freedom on the World Press Freedom Index, which is compiled by Reporters Without Borders. And that ranking has been declining almost every year for the last two decades. So it's an issue that I've been seriously trying to cover with no help from my colleagues in the industry. I presented information on this issue at an international journalism conference at The Hague last year which was sponsored by the United Nations and the Global Forum on Media Development. And in the past, I've also testified before the Federal Communications Commission on the negative effects of corporate media ownership consolidation. So this is not a new issue to me. It's something I've been covering for years as a journalist. And I've done some investigative journalism on this 
uh, uncovered some reports that the FCC itself had commissioned, which showed the negative effects of corporate media con cons ownership con consolidation, including how it limits uh, local news. Uh, re it, it results in a reduction in local news and also limits BIPOC and female ownership of media. Hmm. So, you know, when Clear Channel, now known as iHeartRadio, buys up 880 radio stations, that's right, folks, 880 across the country, and another multimedia conglomerate, uh, Cumulus, ended up buying over 300 radio stations. So when you do that, it puts... Um, it puts the media in the hands of a very few people and, and under the influence of very much pro-corporate concerns. So that's what you have in the United States. That's one of the reasons why we are ranked 55th in the world in terms of press freedom by Reporters Without Borders, something I am not proud of at all. As a U.S. journalist, it's embarrassing to me, and I do believe that it is the obligation of every editor, publisher, reporter, journalist out there to speak out about this problem and to hold our country and our uh, colleagues in the industry accountable for this. Uh, we should be embarrassed by that ranking. Uh, Costa Rica is ahead of us in the World Press Freedom Index rankings. Ghana and uh, Namibia are also ahead of us on the World Press Freedom rankings. So it's something that I've been talking about a lot, um, but it's not being covered by anybody else in the media. It's just like all this information sort of goes down the memory hole like in 1984. I might be the only journalist in the country actually talking about this on a regular basis. Unfortunately, even most so-called progressive media won't touch this story, and I've contacted all of them pretty much, from Rolling Stone to Mother Jones to you know you name it. I've covered the you know the gamut from USA Today to the lefties, and nobody wants to cover the story. So it's a very sad reflection on my profession that no one wants to report the fact that we are currently ranked 55th in the world in terms of press freedom. That means there are 54 other countries where press freedom is valued more and where journalists find their jobs easier to do, have less restrictions and more protection. So that ranking, which I said I'm embarrassed about, is a dirty little secret that folks in my business don't want to talk about and they don't want you to know. Why? Because it undermines their own credibility to report that. That's like saying, my car is a lemon, you know, don't buy it. So there you go. This is my opinion. I'm not speaking for Democracy Watch News, where I serve as executive director, or for any other group. I'm speaking for me, an independent journalist, Mark Taylor Canfield, on this issue. Um, but each year, on May 3rd, which is sort of the whole focus of my year, May 3rd is a very important day to me because it's been designated by the United Nations as World Press Freedom Day. And on that day, every year on May 3rd, Reporters Without Borders, an international advocacy group for journalists, releases their new rankings on the World Press Freedom Index. You can go to their website, Reporters Without Borders, and see this index. The U.S.'s ranking has been declining steadily since 2002, when we were, were ranked uh, 17th in the world. But now we're ranked number 55, and there are many reasons for that. Uh, which I'll get into in a minute. By the way, last year, the Washington Post hosted an event in D.C., in Washington, D.C., where Reporters Without Borders released their 2023 press freedom rankings for the World Press Freedom Index. And guess who was the keynote speaker? None other than Secretary of State Antony Blinken. But even after Medea Benjamin of Code Pink was arrested for staging a protest against the prosecution of Julia, Julian Assange, and she was treated pretty roughly by the Secret Service, by the way. You can see my video about that from last year. But even after this, and after the decline in the U.S. ranking was announced by Reporters Without Borders, Blinken still refused to acknowledge that the U.S. is slipping on our ranking in the World Press Freedom Index. He just won't mention it. So here he is. He's the keynote speaker uh, at the event where the information is released, but he refuses to address it. Now, he has a lot to say, and so does President Biden. They have a lot to say about violations of press freedom in other countries, of course. But they refuse to admit that the U.S. has a problem. And part of that is it's a problem with a lack of diversity of opinion because of the domination of our culture by huge corporate media monopolies. And as I, an example, I cited, you know, 
iHeartRadio buying up 880 radio stations. Uh, Fox owns TV stations in all the major media markets, and in some markets they own the top two rated TV stations in that market, which we call a duopoly. So obviously, folks, when all of the major media is owned by people who are members of the two corporate political parties, then their views are going to be reflected in the media. Um, they're going to be reflected in the media because they own the media. And other alternative voices who do not own the media are going to be shut out. That's just the way the world works. Dr. West uh, is somebody who has now been briefed about this situation, and so I'm hoping that on his campaign trail he will speak out about it. Uh, I volunteered to be an advisor as a volunteer on the, this issue of press freedom because not many journalists uh, are really keeping up on it at all. And unfortunately, none of our political leaders or other political candidates for office are addressing this issue in the United States, except for maybe a couple of members of Congress, um, which would be Jamie Raskin and my friend Pramila Jayapal. Um, but because I briefed her on this issue twice, but no political candidates are addressing the loss of press freedom in the U.S. It just is not being talked about. It's been swept under the rug. It's like it doesn't exist. And as I mentioned, I presented information on this issue at an international conference at The Hague last year. And, you know, it was received openly, you know, with open ears by the Global Forum um, on media development folks and by those other folks at the conference. So in Europe, you know, they're open to listening to me, but not so much here in the United States. Some of the other factors contributing to our declining ranking, and this is really important, uh, part of the reason that we decline every year on the press freedom ranking, according to reporters without borders, is not only the existence of major corporate media monopolies that dominate the information market and filter pretty much everything that you and I see, uh, because of their huge market share. Um, but there have also been a lot of arrests and mistreatments of journalists while they are covering political protests. It's been a problem that goes way back to the Occupy Wall Street movement when uh, reporters from the Associated Press and, other in, 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 and also independent reporters were corralled up with the protesters and arrested during those protests. And it's happened at the Black Lives Matter protests and every major protest movement since. There's also, of course, this issue of the prosecution of whistleblowers in the United States, which actually stepped up under the administration of Barack Obama and hasn't really let up. Um, and Julian Assange, of course, is the, the number one um, topic of conversation when it comes to whistleblowers because of his prosecution. Um, you got to understand that a lot of people in the world of journalism um, see him as a journalist, so they see it as an assault on freedom of the press. Uh, I wrote an article at Truth Out about these very issues that I'm talking to you about so you can go there and read about why the prosecution of whistleblowers and the media monopolies and the rest of journalists and other things have led to our decline on the press freedom ranking. Um, there have also, you know, been issues like this. The ownership of uh, the ownership and control of major social media networks where a lot of people get their information uh, a lot of these uh, are owned by very wealthy influencers like Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg, right? You have Facebook and Twitter owned by these billionaires who get to decide, you know, what you get to see and hear. So I know nobody's going to else is going to tell you about this and then nobody in the United States is going to report on it. But World Press Freedom Day on May 3rd is a very important day. Uh, people all over the world uh, say that they support freedom of the press and yet in, in all over the world journalists are under duress and being arrested and jailed. There's over 300 uh, journalists have been jailed since last year. Um, there's an all-out attack on journalists in Palestine, of course. Um, uh, there's the attrition rate amongst Palestinian journalists in Gaza and that strip in the Rafah is just outrageous and uh, unsustainable. You they can't even train enough journalists to replace all of the reporters who have been killed there. Uh, hundreds, probably, but officially over a hundred. Last year, um, at that international conference at The Hague, we talked a lot about the lack of viability for independent and small family-owned and nonprofit uh, news organizations and news networks. 
Um, I've worked with the Pacifica Radio Network, which was actually the first public radio network in the United States, long before National Public Radio. Um, I've worked for Free Speech Radio News and other uh, Pacifica affiliate stations, and you know, I've done a lot of uh, news and journalism for independent media, including the Independent Media Center in the United States, which was founded back during the mass demonstrations against the World Trade Organization Ministerial Conference here. Um, and that independent media center went on to uh, spark about, a, I don't know, a 200 other independent media center websites around the world where, uh, which promoted and, and uh, supported citizen journalism. Um, Reporters Without Borders is a great group that's working on these issues uh, and so is the Committee to Protect Journalists. There's also Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press here in the United States and others internationally who are working on these issues of press freedom, but most of them don't get any uh, media coverage from their own colleagues in the media. Um, press freedom apparently, according to a friend of mine, is not sexy when it comes to news. Well, it's the very basis of what a democracy is. Without freedom of the press and freedom of expression, you have no democracy. That's not democracy, that's authoritarianism. So, here we go. We all have to pay attention uh, to this issue and educate ourselves because it's not going to come from our media, it's not going to come from our elected officials or candidates for office. Um, and so we have to uh, educate each other, educate ourselves. And in that line of thinking, let me say that uh, Jamie Raskin's uh, bill that he has introduced multiple times into Congress called the Press Act is one good step towards trying to improve our ranking on the World Press Freedom Index because what it does is it, it provides a national shield law to protect journalists from having to face jail time and jail sentences for refusing to reveal their sources. And let me tell you folks, journalists are trained uh, professionally to do jail time rather than reveal their sources and uh, compromise confidentiality. It's a major tenant of ethics in the field of journalism. So, uh, so some states do have a shield law like that, but many don't. And there have been journalists who have gone to jail because they refuse to reveal their sources who are whistleblowers, you know, either in the corporate world or in, in bureaucracies or in government. Um, Pramila Jayapal and Jamie Raskin have gotten together on some of these kind of legislation, this kind of legislation, which is sorely needed, but 99% of the members of Congress don't even know that the World Press Freedom Index even exists. They've never heard of this group called Reporters Without Borders, and they have no idea what I'm talking about here. They've never been briefed by their staff. Their staff doesn't know. The media doesn't report it. They're not teaching it in school, so you have to hear it here. I'm telling you, it's been a very difficult and disappointing struggle trying to get uh, politicians to acknowledge these issues and trying to get people in my own business, in the news business, to hold themselves accountable for our declining press freedom ranking. No one wants to face it. They don't want to acknowledge it. They are in denial or they just ignore it. And that's a shame. It's a sad, sad statement. And um, I'm very disappointed. So thanks for hearing me out on this important issue, which I think is probably one of the most censored news stories of our times. As I said, I believe that a lot of my colleagues are very embarrassed by our declining press freedom ranking and they just refuse to acknowledge it. I, for one, am not proud of our declining ranking, but at this point, since no one else is talking about it, I don't see much room for improvement. I don't, I mean, I do, there's a lot of room for improvement. There's a huge room for improvement. Sorry, let me restate that. I don't see any improvement happening and I don't see any improvement in the future, in the near future either, because no one is even trying to hold themselves accountable and no one's talking about it. It's like the secret. Shh, don't talk about it. I expect our ranking on the World Press Freedom Index by Reporters Without Borders to continue to decline year after year. We've declined already to number 55, so who knows where we'll be in another five years. And apparently there is no shame in my industry. So this is Mark Taylor Canfield. That's my editorial for the day. <laughs> uh, thanks for tuning in to the MTC Report live from Seattle, and I hope you're all doing well. Peace out.